this week's drive, we get in at least a few clean laps, roll right out of a title, dump a debut, and watch that man win again. All this and more in this week's Drive. We start this week with a NASCAR round at Kansas City in the U.S., deep in the heart of cowboy country, as made famous by Hollywood. Jeff Gordon won the inaugural event here last year. Despite the long track and near-perfect conditions, the race was to see eight multi-car pileups, which brought out the red flags. Only 28 of the 43 drivers finished the event, a season low. On lap five, Tony Raines, Casey Atwood and Ward Burton get tangled and cause carnage in the pack. I thought I saw a tire, the cap off a tire go down in the infield. Like maybe the left rear. Yeah. On lap 147, early series leader Sterling Marlin goes out after contact with Jeff Burton dropping him to fifth place in the championship. Once again, that Mike Wallace, he started to run up on Mike Wallace and the car got loose or pushed or something, and he had to jump off the throttle a little bit, and that's when the 99 ran yeah. in the back of him. Yeah, like the Despite his sponsor, series leader Mark Martin, who has never won a Winston Cup in 20 years of trying, goes out with a dead engine. Jeff Gordon led the last 57 laps and seemed headed for an easy win until Johnny Benson, Jeremy Mayfield, Jimmy Spencer, and Ricky Rudd crashed with five laps left. The rest of the field parked for more than 13 minutes in blistering heat before starting up again. Gordon pulled away from the restart to win, snapping a three-week string of frustration in which he finished 40th, 14th and 37th after back-to-back -back wins in the two races before that. Gordon held off rookie Ryan Newman after the restart and Rusty Wallace was third. For now at least, the points lead belongs to Gordon's teammate, rookie Jimmy Johnson. Johnson's 10th place gave him an 11-point lead over Martin. The World Rally Series went as far away as possible to New Zealand, with reigning champ Richard Burns holding a slender hope of retaining his world crown. The Englishman would need to win all three remaining events in New Zealand, Australia and Britain to hold off his Peugeot teammate Marcus Gronholm. Burns was quickest on the opening four stages, and after day one, Burns held an 18.3 second lead. Ronholm needs just seven points from the final three rounds to land a second world title. The Finns struggled running first on the gravel roads as he acted as road sweeper and suffered hydraulic trouble which sprayed oil onto his windscreen. Ronholm ended the day third, 37.8 seconds down on Burns. Finland's Harry Rovanpera in the third Peugeot ended the first day in second spot, splitting the title contenders and giving the dominant French team a clean sweep of the podium places. Finn Jani Parsonen took fifth place, the Mitsubishi driver making an impression on his first visit to New Zealand as he stands in for the injured Alistair McRae. Parsonen scored his first ever stage win on the fifth stage, the first for Mitsubishi since the launch of their new car. Four times world champ Tommy Mackinnon moved up to fourth after the final two stages on the edge of Auckland. His Subaru teammate Petter Solberg kept up the pressure on Parsonen and took sixth, just a tenth of a second behind the Mitsubishi. Scotland's former champion Colin McRae also needed wins in the final three rounds of the season to remain in the title, but retired rather abruptly on the fourth stage. Right and six left opens into K2 right plus don't catch them. Three, two. McRae and his co driver Nicky Grist were unhurt in the crash, but the radiator was damaged. Just uh, misheard a, a note a bit, and then by the time I realised how severe the corner was, just couldn't really stop, got caught in the gravel and the car just slid a bit too far past the apex and just over the bank. And you had? Basically stuck, couldn't, wouldn't come back out, it was a bit of a steep bank so we couldn't. 
On day two, drivers faced 10 stages and 17 hours behind the wheel over 206 kilometers of racing, including the 59 kilometer ninth stage, the longest stage in the series outside the Safari Rally. Eight kilometers into this stage, Parsonen's effort came to rest in the New Zealand bush. Rovan Perra kept out of trouble and up to speed, chasing early leader Burns. He ended the day still in second place. Gronholm picked up the pace and claimed the final six stages on day two. Carlos Sainz, his position with Ford now secure for next year, claimed fifth place. Solberg couldn't match the Peugeots, but posted impressive times to stay ahead of teammate Mackinnon. Gronholm was raising a storm as he charged along the course, catching and passing Rovan Perra to go second. He could also mathematically be beaten by Frenchman Gilles Panizzi in the point standings with three victories to finish the season. But Panizzi lay eighth after the opening two days of the Auckland-based event, six and a half minutes behind Gronholm. Burns was quickest on four of the first seven stages, but his slim title hopes were about to change. Flat left over crest, and flat left in. 50 flat right over bridge and flat right minus in. 30 flat left, 60 breaking, medium right plus, and tightens. Oh no. In a typical understated way, Burns sums up the situation. He was unhurt in the incident on stage 15, while co-driver Robert Reed suffered bruising to his right arm. Um, just touched the bank on the outside of the corner and, and the car went up on two wheels, dug in and, and ended, up, ended up there. This amateur video shows the severity of the crash. Burns wasn't the only victim. Ford's Marco Martin went out and his retirement handed the Manufacturers' Championship to Peugeot, their third consecutive Manufacturers' title. Subaru's Mackinnon opted against taking risks as he looked to preserve his fourth place and end his miserable run of retirements. With Burns out, Rovan Perra was promoted back into second place, 55 seconds down on Grunholm. The drivers faced a further eight stages in the final leg of the event before a prize giving on the edge of Auckland, where Grunholm was hoping to be crowned champion if he reached the end. Although almost certainly assured of a second world title, Grunholm wasn't lifting off the throttle, and he set the pace in all eight stages. Rovan Perra endured a scare two stages from the end when hydraulic problems cost him a second per kilometer, but he retained his second place. Mackinnon was set to score his first podium since the Cyprus rally in April, bringing to an end his string of DNFs. Subaru Solberg seemed all set to claim a second consecutive podium finish, but his engine died in the last but one stage. Petter had planned to dedicate the top three finish to his son Oliver, celebrating his first birthday on Sunday. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. The only driver who could challenge Gronholm's title, Gilles Panizzi, kept Marcus waiting, but came home a distant eighth as the Finn roared to victory. Marcus, who claimed his only championship in the year 2000, came home almost four minutes ahead of teammate and compatriot Harry Rovan Perra to wrap up the title. <laughs> Another double as well. You've won the drivers, but also the manufacturer's title in the bag. Yeah, it's good. It has been a good year for our team and for me. 
fantastic. Nice to finish with total domination too. Every stage won by M. Gronholm today. Yeah, not bad, not bad. We finish in, in style. <laughs> the result was also the team's eighth 1-2 finish of the season. Two TV crew members and the spectator were slightly injured when Bulgarian driver Dimitar Ilyev crashed into them on stage 14. Off to Motegi in Japan for an away round of the Motorcycle Grand Prix Championship. The MotoGP title's already decided, but Daijiro Kato sped to provisional pole position on his new Honda four-stroke, putting to good use the hometown advantage of being back in Japan. Kato dominated most of the session, but had to fight back in the last lap after Biagi's Yamaha dislodged him from the top. The reigning 250cc champion responded in style, shaving 0.8 of a second off the previous pole record on a bike he described afterwards as practically perfect. Italy's Max Biaggi, fighting for the championship runners-up spot, took the provisional second place at the 4.8km circuit in eastern Japan. Biaggi, a four times world champion in the 250 class, will leave the Yamaha team at the end of the year, frustrated at a lack of race wins despite a mid-season upgrade of machinery. Valentino Rossi, who secured the first MotoGP title with his 10th win of the season in Brazil last month, led briefly but missed a final fast lap, emerging from the pits too late. The Italian, despite suffering from a stomach complaint, still managed to ride spectacularly, lifting the rear wheel under brakes and sliding the bike into turns. Biagi's Yamaha teammate, Spaniard Carlos Checa, will remain with the works team next year. Championship leader Marco Melandri grabbed provisional pole for the 250cc race on his Aprilia, with his closest rival for the title, Spaniard Fonzi Nieto, suffering a mystery illness and managing only the fourth fastest time. In the 125 class, Honda's Daniel Pedrosa was quickest, with championship leader Arno Vincent third fastest. Reigning champion Manuel Poggiali was just tenth quickest on his Gilera. Next day, in official qualifying, Kato's effort to improve on Friday's time was not helped when he crashed his first choice bike at the start of the session and had to take it back to the pits. In fact, he lost control on the entry to the corner and the bike was crossed up and unsettled as he turned in. He couldn't improve his time with the spare bike, but luckily for him, neither could anyone else. Biagi stayed second as other riders failed to better the front pair's times in provisional practice. Mechanical problems reared as his Yamaha broke down near the end of the session, and he too couldn't go quicker on his spare bike. Only Italy's Loris Caparossi seriously threatened the front two, jumping up the grid to third place from fifth. Loris, a three-time world champion in the 125 and 250 classes, will switch teams at the end of the year to join Ducati's brand new MotoGP effort. After his session, new wife Ingrid congratulated Loris. An off-color Rossi could only manage sixth place in his first qualifying session since becoming MotoGP champion, and Kato realized he'd been lucky. I've messed up today, and I just hope I don't mess up tomorrow in my home Grand Prix. In the 250 class, all but three riders improved their times over Friday's session. Fonzi Nieto claimed pole from Championship Series leader Melandri with a late last lap as the flag fell to end the session. Melandri, aged just 20, has been racing at Grand Prix level since he was 15 and has been unlucky not to have been crowned world champion already. Pedrosa bettered the previous record by six tenths of a second, taking his fifth pole of the season. Only Poggiali was able to come close, getting to within one tenth as the session ended. Once the race got underway, Brazil's Alex Barros, riding his new four-stroke Honda for the first time, took the fight to the front. Valentino Rossi, now recovered, was seeking his 50th career victory and grabbed the lead. 
Barros had been optimistic that the four-stroke Honda would give him the power to beat Rossi, and it looked like the Brazilian was right as he reclaimed the lead from the Italian world champion. Rossi was under more pressure than he's seen all year, this mistake letting Kato through. Kawasaki's MotoGP debut was laid low when Akira Yanagawa flung it on the seventh lap. Max Biaggi's race ended a lap later as he retired, suffering from a risky front tyre choice. Meanwhile, up front, the Honda battle raged lap after lap. Rossi goes ahead. Almost immediately, Barros repasses. The race suggests that Rossi may have a tougher time keeping the title next year than he did winning it this year. Norris Caparossi was third, making it an all-Honda podium and clinching the constructor's title for the Japanese manufacturer. Rossi's second place ensured the team crown for Repsol Honda. His teammate, Japan's Toru Okawa, third in the championship before the race, could manage only fourth place, but it was enough to lift him above Biaggi in the standings as the Italian dropped out. Try to give it a pace, but uh, no push too much or to not destroy the tire. So after I went to see a little bit of Valentino and uh, he overtaking me in the straight and uh, I tried to follow him, he made a mistake, one break. And at uh, that time, I tried to still remain, I think, three laps to the finish. So I give you my 100% I can do. And uh, well, I improve a little bit the lap times. And uh, I have a little bit gap for disadvantage for Cape for the last lap and, and win. So I'm very, very happy for that. The race for the 250 title was still on, although Melandri had a healthy lead with four point scoring rounds to go. Tony Elias eventually found himself in front, but Melandri grabbed a slender lead. Elias wasn't giving up and promptly retook the lead. Melandri decided that 20 points for second was better than road testing the Japanese gravel traps and backed off. Nieto could finish only fourth behind wildcard entry and early leader Yuki Takahashi. Melandri now leads the title by 52 points. The 125 race promised to be the usual fast, furious, and frantic dash. Starting from pole, Daniel Pedrosa led from flag to flag after opening up a gap over the main chasers, Arno Vincent, Manuel Poggiali, and Steve Jenkner. Italian 16-year-old novice Andrea Dovizioso was an early crasher. Two years older and with two years more experience, Alex D'Angelis did exactly the same thing seconds later. Vincent, the only rider in all three classes to score points in every race this season, suffered an exhaust problem two laps from the end, dropping from second to 15th. 17 that week, Pedrosa won from Poggiali and Jenkner. For one weekend, the Portuguese town of Pacos de Ferreira becomes the world capital of motorcycle trials. And first, the women's world team title with nine countries entered. With Leia Sunson commanding form, the Spaniards reclaimed the title they last held in 2000 with 19 penalties. Dolores Sanchez and Merche Ribera completed the winning lineup. Norway was second with 23, and Germany third on 29. For the men, Takahisa Fujinami headed up the Japanese effort, Dougie Lampkin the British, and Albert Cabastani the Spanish teams. The men's competition would prove even closer than the women's event, with the best, Japanese definitely included in that bracket, able to take advantage of a course low on hazards and relatively easy for the very top riders like Fujinami. Everyone knew what Lampkin could do. Much would depend on the performance of the rest of the team as to how the British squad would feature in the final. Steve Colley, recently back from serious injury, Graham Jarvis shown here, and Sam Connor didn't disappoint. But Spain still pushed all the way in this, the last event of the 2002 International Outdoor Trials calendar. With world indoor champ Albert Cabastani, Adam Raga seen here, David Cobos and Mark Frischer, the Spaniards look to have the strongest squad. Lampkin, though, led by example, guiding Britain to their third victory in 19 stagings of the championships. The other titles were in 1997 and 99. It capped a marvelous year for the 26-year-old Montessa rider, the world team title to go with the individual outdoor title, his fifth. However, not everyone was willing to share in his and Britain's hour of glory. 
the Spanish appealed against the final result. They finished on nine penalties, one in arrears of the British, and claimed the Brits should have been docked another penalty on the second lap. The judges didn't agree, hence the no-show by the full Spanish squad on the podium. Japan earned third with 12 penalties. Czech Formula 3000 driver Thomas Enger, seen here with a Prost Formula 1 car on his 25th birthday, was stripped of the international Formula 3000 title after being disqualified from the race in Hungary, where he returned a positive drugs test for cannabis. Enger drove in Formula 1 with the now defunct Prost team at the end of 2001, and he becomes the first world motorsports champion to lose a title through a drugs test. Class 1 world offshore powerboating came to the United Arab Emirates. In very rough sea conditions with two to three meter swells and temperatures of almost 40 degrees Celsius tested the crews on the 7.1 nautical mile course. Local boat Victory 7 led initially from Jotun, but the Highlander swept into the lead. As Jotun maintained third, Victory 7 reclaimed the lead from the heavier diesel powered Highlander. Championship leader Spirit of Norway was back in sixth place early in the race, but moved up to finish second. Riviera, driven by Australians Barry Cotter and McGrath, had a great start and jockeyed for first place with Victory 7 throughout the opening two laps. They then had a fierce battle with Spirit of Norway until a turbocharger blew on lap eight, their fastest, forcing them to retire. Despite this, the Australians remain in the hunt for a top three finish in the championship. The diesel-powered Jotun, driven by Norwegian Hillestad and Sweden's Roth, finished third for the second time this season. Highlander produced its best race of the season to finish fourth after leading briefly. Victory 7, in the hands of the United Arab Emirates team Al Nasser and Al Kwama, took a popular home race win in front of a partisan crowd of around 50,000 spectators. The local pair took the trophy, but having won the previous four rounds, Spirit of Norway still has a commanding 22-point lead over Victory 7 in the championship. I felt very comfortable in the boat. I think we had good control and uh, we pushed hard for a few laps when they caught uh, Riviera and they showed that we could stay with anybody. But uh, again, uh, the name of the game for us today was to finish in a good position. Bernie Eccleston's latest idea to revitalize Formula One is a handicap system that could dramatically increase the weight of winning cars, making them carry an extra kilogram for every point they're already ahead of the field. Weight handicapping, common in touring cars, is just one idea under review. The good side of the suggestion is that extra weight could be placed to best advantage. And finally, a British truck driver is the proud new owner of Eddie Irvine's Formula One Jaguar. 32-year-old Adrian Dawn won the R3 in a competition run by Jaguar and Britain's Sky TV. He was presented with a car, and the ultimate parking problem, by three times world champion Sir Jackie Stewart. Irvine raced the car in Britain, Monaco, Austria, Canada and Germany this season. What a parking problem to have. We'll park there for this week, but so you stay on track and up to speed, make sure you catch next week's Drive.